Hi guys, this is Rusty78609, Central Texas, USA, and this is Beer 30. And I'm going to tell you a Beer 30 story. And why am I going to do it now? Well, because if I don't do it now, I'll forget the whole damn story. Anyway, I'm going to put my glasses on. Can I do that? Well, I can, but I can't see the, can't see the video then. But anyway, I'll tell you a story. This happened in about 1960, oh, 65, 66 in that range. And uh, at that time, I had a 64 and a half Mustang. It was a three, 289. It wasn't high performance, but it was high performance because my brother was a genius on autos. And uh, he and I together made it. It was the fastest car in a quarter mile in Kennedy, Texas for at least two years. And it was kind of like being the fastest gun, you know what I mean? back in the 1800s. I mean, it, people wanted to try you all the time. And they did. They, I'm telling you, man, I'd be sitting in this, we had a little place there called, a, it was called the Creamy, which is like a Dairy Queen. That's where everybody hung out. But anyway, I'd be in there and somebody come in and say, you think you got a fast car, blah, 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 blah. Next thing you know, we're out to the drag strip. Well, it wasn't a drag strip. It was just a quarter mile that we had marked off and you'd have to have somebody start you. And uh, as far as the finish line, the finish line was railroad tracks. You went over the railroad tracks, and that was the finish line. And uh, But anyway, yeah, I've been out there many times. It was a safe road, reason to me. The only problem I had was is once you went over the railroad tracks, I mean, I mean, hell, I'd turn in a quarter mile. I'd be turning over 100 miles an hour. Well, you didn't have a lot of space to stop after going over those railroad tracks. But anyway, it worked out. I didn't kill myself, obviously. But anyway, I'll never forget one good story, and I'll pass this along to you. Uh, there was a couple of, there was one guy in Kennedy, he had a Chevy Impala, had a 348, uh, it, was, it was reasonably fast, and, but anyway, him and another guy went to work on it, because they were determined to beat me in a quarter mile, and they put on two four-barrel carburetors and 456 gears and all kinds of stuff to be damn sure they blew me off the road in a quarter mile, and anyway, I, I heard them. I'd, I'd hear them you know, trying it out on a, a highway, and it, it sounded pretty bad to me. I mean, it got my attention. And uh, so anyway, one evening, it was, uh, I don't know, five o'clock in the evening, I guess, and I was at the Creamy, and, and a friend of mine, Paul, I won't mention his last name, came in. He worked in an oil patch, big old boy, muscled up. And anyway, he came in, we were talking, and while we were talking, these other two guys came in. And, uh, and they walked in and kind of strutted a little bit, so I, I, I kind of figured something was up. Next thing, one of them said, uh, so you think you got a fast car, huh? I said, well, I, I don't think uh, I do. It, it, it does pretty good in a quarter mile. And, and they said, well, how, and, then, and one of them said, well, how much do you think that? And, and I knew what, they, they wanted to bet. Hell, I didn't have any money, shit. I mean, I couldn't have made change for a dime. And uh, anyway, I said, well, how much you want to bet? And uh, he said, well, I'll bet you 10 bucks. Well, hell, 10 bucks might have been a thousand or, or a million. I didn't have $10. Hell, I don't think I had $10 in one place in my whole life. And uh, anyway, uh, Paul said, he, of course, he worked in the oil patch. He was making pretty good money. He said, hell, I'll back you. And uh, I'm holding this camera in my hand, so if it's shaking, that's just the way it is. Uh, anyway, uh, he, Paul said, I'll back you. And I said, all right. So I said, well, let's just, we'll go over to quarter mile. And it was right by the high school. So we drove over there, and boy, and I'm, I'm listening to that car behind me. Ruma, ruma, ruma. You know, they had headers. I mean, this thing looked like a drag racing machine. I thought, shit, Paul, I hope, I hope we have made a mistake. Anyway, he said, oh, you got him, you got him, you got him. And I'd, I'd have raced him anyway. Hell, it wouldn't make any difference to me. And so anyway, we get over there, and one of the guys in the car gets out. He's going to be the starter. Well, I'm sure they already had something set up so that he'd get a jump on me, but it didn't bother me. I mean, I was quick out of the hole, so to speak, and that was not my concern. Uh, my concern was that, that old car, that old 348, was a pretty long lung engine, and my little 289... Uh, it, I was good for a quarter mile, and that's it. And but anyway, sure enough, oh, what's his name dropped his hands, and boy, we hit it. I mean, and I got him out of the hole. I mean, I shot out on him about two car lengths, but then I heard him growling up behind me. I thought, oh shit, I'm, 
I'm running out of gears here. Of course, mine was a four speed and he had a four speed. And, uh, but, but, but I'm telling you, man, I, I, all of a sudden it, it, I, that old Mustang would go, man. Uh, it, it was quick. It was damn quick. And the next thing you know, uh, old Paul said, he started laughing. I said, what's so damn funny? He said, man, you must have beat him 10 car lengths. <laughs> Cause I never looked back, man, I'm shifting and going. But anyway, that's a beer 30 story that I thought you might enjoy. For all you guys that knew anything about cars or enjoyed that crap back then, you know, we used to take the girls out there. And, and I remember one time though, I, I, I got in a, I'll, I'll go ahead and tell you this story too. Uh, there was an old boy that, uh, he was a good guy, I liked him, and uh, he, he bought him a 406 Ford. He had a, uh, a newspaper route and saved money. He saved a lot of money on a damn newspaper route. I'm trying to figure out how to hold his phone with the other hand. Anyway, he saved a lot of money, and he bought him a brand new 406 Ford, and that damn 406 Ford was fast. I'm telling you, it was fast. And uh, anyway, I couldn't even touch him. I, I wouldn't even try him in a quarter mile. Hell, he, this thing was, he was way out of my league. Cause he was turning in the probably 11s in that range. And the best I'd ever turned was in the 12s, maybe 13, low 13. But anyway, he, he said one time, he said, well, I'll spot you eight car lengths. Well, that was a big mistake because my strength was in the shorter distance. I mean, you, you don't make that mistake. But anyway, man, we did it and I beat him. But I have to tell you this, when he came by me, he liked to turn my car over. I mean, God damn, he was rolling. Woo-wee, I bet I didn't beat him by, oh, I might have beat him by half a car length, as I recall. It wasn't much, but it was enough, and he knew it. And and uh, and then he said something, but we didn't bet any money on that. That was just fun. And he said, man, if I hadn't spotted you so much, and I said, I hear you, with you know, you, you're the one that came up with that shit, not me. I mean, but anyway, just a fun, some funny stories from back in the 1960s, guys, that, you know, it was a different world then. We had a lot of fun, did a lot of fun things. And and, and believe it or not, back then, uh, the DPS, there were two highway patrolmen, I won't mention their names either, but I remember them. And uh, they were actually gonna uh, mark off a place on a highway uh, where they would supervise our drag racing. Now, is that smart? They, they, never, they couldn't get approval to do it because of all the bureaucracy and all the fear of retaliation by parents and stuff. But it would have been a brilliant idea. They did show us a good place, though, and we did move our drag race into that spot. But anyway, having said that, guys, thumbs up, or thumbs up, carpe diem, adios, bye bye, buy anything you want, drink whatever you want, and uh, you know, life's good. Keep your health. Uh, use the Amazon link, and uh, anyway, enjoy your life. That's all I can tell you because I I've enjoyed mine. I've had a lot of fun, made a lot of mistakes, uh, and but I'm still here. I'm still here. Adios, amigos. Bye-bye.